So this is what we see today. Um, Bernie Sanders has actually become a victim of his own propaganda, the propaganda of the Democratic Party in relation to Russiagate, which pretty much started when the WikiLeaks released the pedestrian emails in 2016 and Hillary Clinton's corruption was exposed um, and she, she and the Democratic Party, they obviously had a leaker within the DNC who released those Podesta emails to WikiLeaks. And uh, instead of actually any of the mainstream media focusing on uh, the actual emails, the Podesta emails, which were full of corruption and had indications of Hillary Clinton elevating Trump, the, her campaign elevating Trump in the Pied Piper strategy because she thought she could trounce Trump. And it turned out that she was very wrong. And she didn't realize, I don't think, what a poor candidate she is. Anyway, um, so to cover up all of that, and uh, part of, uh, you know, part of the cover up of, uh, to distract is to, to blame Russia for those, um, that interference. And they, they said that Russia hacked the DNC. Well, even William Binney, who is, um, you know, a top NSA whistleblower, said that it's very easy. The NSA could find out in a, basically in a New York minute uh, who, if, there, it was, if it was a hack or if it was a leak. And he said it was a, a leak because uh, the speed of the downloads and all of that, it, you know, and it could, the NSA would know that already. Anyway, the DNC, I'm not going to go into the whole thing, but the DNC investigated themselves and used a dodgy... Um, investigative service uh, and you know anyway that you can find all of this out uh, through Aaron Maté um, who's done a lot of work on Russiagate. Aaron Maté is a uh, writer for The Nation, he's a journalist, he's a journalist for The Grey Zone and um, I have uh, I have high regard for The Grey Zone, Max Blumenthal, Rania Kalik, um, Anya Parampil, Ben Norton, those various independent journalists um, they do great work on the grey zone anyway, so Erin Maté has done a lot of work on Russiagate, so if you really want to find out what's really, what, what Russiagate really is, and how it, he, and Erin Maté, how he debunked it, this idea that Russia um, was interfering, of course all countries interfere in other countries, but this whole idea that they're constantly trying to uh, fiddle with the elections and that they're now supposedly helping Bernie Sanders, um, win the election. So they're, so this is the amazing thing. They're helping Donald Trump and they're helping Bernie Sanders. What a surprise. So the, the, the Democratic, you know, and this is the Washington Post too, which has got close connections with the CIA. The um, Jeff Bezos owns the Washington Post. Uh, Jeff Bezos and the Washington Post, they did a, a some like, something like a $600 million deal with the CIA to host post them on a cloud of some kind. I, I can't remember the whole details, but anyway, they've got great financial dealings with the CIA, with Jeff Bezos and the Washington Post. So, um, you know, Washington Post is just like so much of the mainstream media. It's just a propaganda uh, arm of the national security state. So they thought that they would put this out today before the Nevada caucus, just, you know, to keep that going along there. And sadly, of course, Bernie Sanders has um, helped along this narrative by putting out his own um, videos um, about, you know, Russia, you know, and actually promoting the idea that Russia is meddling in U.S. elections, etc. Uh, so, you know, anybody who threatens the national security state, the military-industrial complex, or anybody who the national security state is not happy with, like they're not particularly happy with Trump because he's a lousy salesperson and he's not entirely controllable, so they want somebody that is completely controllable and is a smooth operator like Obama to be head of, um, you know, their um, endless wars, etc. And Trump just isn't that predictable. He's impulsive and he's a bit of a ning-nong in many ways. Um, he's not the brightest bulb in the bunch. So, um, you know, so they're, tr they're on one hand trying to get rid of Trump, you know, the mainstream media assists in this with constant, constant rushigating against Trump. And uh, Trump has a lot. There's a lot of problems. He, uh, there's a lot of things he could have been impeached for, and uh, unfortunately, they pick probably some of the weakest things 
But one of the major things he could have been impeached for is the genocide in Yemen. And uh, also his um, Jared Kushner giving um, nuclear technology to, uh, to Saudi Arabia without congressional approval, um, assassinating um, an international military figure, uh, Qasem Soleimani, which is against international law. There, there's a list of things that Trump could be an impeach for. But anyway, this whole Russiagate thing, basically a lot of it was to do with the DNC covering up for their corruption during the Hillary Clinton campaign, uh, the corruption of Hillary Clinton and how the DNC functions. And there was talk that um, Seth Rich, who was murdered outside a bar, um, that he was the leaker in this, um, the leaker to WikiLeaks. Well, we probably will never know that because uh, Julian Assange and uh, WikiLeaks, they don't really give up their sources, but there was some hint of that anyway. But We'll never know, but th this is um, this is basically all about that. And so this Russia, Russia Gate thing, of course, the U.S. wants to vilify Russia anyway, because Russia has nuclear parity and Russia is a major power, and the U.S. cannot abide by that. So they um, are doing their best to vilify Russia, to vilify China, to vilify Iran, to vilify Venezuela, to vilify any country that has not submitted to the U.S. So this is all, it all works in very nicely to um, to try to, you know, for the Democratic Party to keep this narrative going right up until Trump's election about Trump being a Putin puppet and all that kind of stuff. He's a lot of things, but I don't think Putin would have picked Trump as <laughs> somebody to be a Manchurian candidate. But anyway, you know, um, but, you know, it's just, that's really, really sad. And it's just gotten to such ridiculous levels now. And Bernie Sanders, I've said this before in the past about Bernie Sanders, that I was sure this was going to come back to bite him, and sure enough it has, because they're going to do everything. They're going to pull out all the stops to make sure that anybody that is remotely progressive gets nowhere near the uh, Democratic um, nominee for, the, for President of the United States. And so this is just one of many uh, things that the D DNC... Uh, Wants, wants to happen. They want to put in the idea that Bernie Sanders, that that Vladimir Putin wants Bernie Sanders as President of the United States. They want to put out the idea that Bernie Sanders is, is um, a socialist, which he isn't. Um, he's a democratic socialist, but uh, capitalism is not, uh, socialism is not capitalism with a, with a happy face. Um, uh, you know, they, they don't want Bernie Sanders. They don't want him because he wants Medicare for all. Um, Bernie Sanders is, and other things like that. But Bernie Sanders, of course, his foreign policy is very wanting. And I've done a couple of videos just recently about that, so I won't go into that. But anyway, um, you know, it's just so sad. And uh, and and sadly, Bernie Sanders, um, as, as I said, he's become a victim of his own propaganda. Um, but in this, and this is, but he continues on this propaganda, um, as he says further down, when they, he apparently was told this by uh, the lying intelligence operatives, you know, about Russia. Met, and he said, this is what he said, which, you know, it just continues on more of this Russia gate nonsense. Bernie Sanders said, quote, I don't care, frankly, who Russian President Vladimir Putin wants to be president, end quote, Sanders said in a statement. My message to Putin is clear. Stay out of American elections, and as president, I will make sure you do. See, that's just really sad. Um, you know, it's just sad. Um, and I think he went on to say, I think this is part of continued quote, in 2016, Russia used internet propaganda to sow division in our country, and my understanding is that they are doing it again in 2020. Some of the ugly stuff on the internet attributed to our campaign may well not be coming from our real supporters, end quote. Now, now that is an example right there. Firstly, that he's he's promoting more of that Russiagate nonsense of the Russia interfering with the elections, um, and also he's also using at the same time using that propaganda to um, throw it back, uh, saying that um, now he's implying that Russia is pretending to be um, Bernie Sanders supporters. And, and uh, you know, doing misogynist stuff. Well, that wouldn't make sense, would it? That doesn't make sense because um, that's actually... I mean, anybody can pretend to be a Bernie Sanders supporter, really. I could pretend to be a Bernie Sanders supporter and, and put out a whole bunch of misogynist stuff about people. And 
I mean, it's ridiculous that anybody attributes anything that um, support, su supposed supporters say and do um, with candidates on the internet because you can pretend to be anybody. So I won't read you this article by the Washington Post because it's just sad. Um, and then, but of course, Trump using, even though uh, I think he knows, that, he knows that this whole Manchurian candidate thing about himself is not nonsense, right? But now he's throwing it at Bernie Sanders. Wouldn't, wouldn't Putin rather have Bernie who honeymooned in Moscow? I mean, good Lord. Um, you know, it's just such a, uh, it's beyond, it's so disgusting. I find this so disgusting. It's, yeah, somebody said the other day on a live stream, you know, we're just a part of someone's idea of a sick joke. And I think we are, you know, it's just like they have such contempt for the public. They don't care how they lie like rugs, all of them. And uh, there's so much propaganda out there and they're tripping over themselves with their own terrible stories and lack of credible sources and lack of credible um, witnesses and lack of credible information. And they quote um, intelligence sources when we all know that the CIA are just liars. They even, I mean, it was Pompeo even admitted that the CIA, they train to lie. Um, and they just, they're just help, they, they just assist the war machine, the CIA. Um, the FBI are liars too. And it's, it's just sort of, why would anybody believe intelligence sources, really? Um, so it's just all a terrible, terrible, you know, it is, it's a sad, a sick joke that we unfortunately are the recipients and victims of this ongoing, these people should not be in charge of a, a chip shop, really. They're, they're so, they shouldn't have, be anywhere near any sort of power. They shouldn't have any sort of say in anything because they're morally bankrupt. I'm not necessarily talking about Bernie Sanders or, um, at this, at, in this, when I say that, but Bernie Sanders, of course, has been, he's put out that Russiagate stuff and that's not small potatoes because Russiagate is leading to uh, an, a cold war. It's a, it's a new cold war where they're both amping up nuclear weapons and all sorts of things and it could lead eventually to an actual, th you know, World War Three. Um, so it's not, this propaganda is very, very dangerous and Bernie Sanders has been participating in it and now it's come back to bite him in the ass, basically. Um, and I, and we all knew it would. Anybody on the left that was following this knew it would because they'll throw anything at him, anything at all. Um, so they'll say that he's a Russian asset. They will say he's a communist. I mean, Donald Trump has been putting out this narrative that he's some sort of communist. Um, and, you know, there'll be other things too. And, and of course, they're trying to throw, they're trying to make out that his supporters are all misogynist and therefore he must be misogynist. He attracts it and all this kind of nonsense. And it's all because neither side, neither the GOP or the, the Democratic Party, the corporate Dem Democrats, want a, 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 someone who's anywhere m remotely progressive, anywhere near that, uh, the office of the President of the United States. And why is that? Because the DNC and the GOP, the Democratic Party and the, the GOP are just one big party, really, one big warmongering corporate serving party. And um, they just present differently, a little differently, but they both have the same aims, warmongering, endless war and serving corporations. And you and I have nothing to do with it. You and I are just um, fodder for their wars, that we're just fodder for their awful uh, jobs and they and they and they throw you crumbs and they throw less and less crumbs, and they don't care about you. They don't care about me, as um, as that comedian said. God, what's his name? Um, he said, you know, we don't belong to their club. Anyway, that's all I want to say about this. So um, I'm not going to bother reading anything more of that. So thanks for watching. My name's Trish Roberts. You're watching Faint Signals from Vega. Till next time. Bye for now.